Time, time for a, another medical equipment teardown. Here we got this unit. This is a reverse osmosis machine. It uses to clean water. We got the ordinary tap water in it to it. And out of it you get almost pure dihydrogen oxide or water with no uh, traces of uh, bacteria or different viruses, proteins or salts. So this is very clean. And this is used for dialysis, for dialyzed blood. You don't want anything to go enter the blood from the water. You just want to, the water to be as pure as possible. And when I found this unit, it looked like this. They had, they had stripped it down. And the power supply was in another junk box. I managed to rescue that as well. So this will be a pretty interesting teardown to see how this unit works. Here we got the connector manifold, so you can see here, the tap is going to go here, the tap water. I think this shows the drain, this is the drain pipe. And these two, you can see here, this is the output, you can see the flash here. It goes here, and goes back here, so these two, these are actually circulating the water continuously to clean it. And here we go to this last one, that I really don't know what is. They are very easy to remove. Just push them in and pull them out, like that. Quick connectors. Now I can see it a bit better here. And we also got these connectors here, that goes to the dialysis machine. Here we can see some specifications. It's made by Gambro. It's a Swedish company, I think. So yes, uh, universal voltages, and there are the powers, power ratings, IPX1, and manufactured 2010. Here you can see the inside of it, we got the pump, we got uh, a tank here, with some sensors. The filter is behind this uh, plate here. This is some valve pack, and this box, we will see in a minute. And a bit further down here, we can see the intake of the pump, the output here, and this is a circulation valve. You can actually rotate this and see how much uh, water is actually circulated inside of this unit. Here's the top. We've got the valves, they're actually solenoid valves, goes like this. These are tubes, very stiff plastic tubes. This one here goes up to the tank, same as this one. They have four, two level sensors here. And on the bottom here, we got some another kind of sensor. I think this one is a photodiode and a infrared LED. Here's the other side of it. We can see the big Reverse osmosis filter here, a flow meter. This is a spe pretty special thing. I think that's a conductivity sensor. You can see the conductivity of the water, see how much uh, clean it is. Here's the same thing, a LED and a photodiode. You can see if there's any flow here. There's a little steel ball in here. So when the water flows, the ball will go up and down, and this will register, register that. And here we got the main circuit board that controls everything. And here you can see the power supply. The input is here, we got a big interference filter. We got two fuses, one for a phase, one for a neutral. And we got two phase fuses here as well, one here, one here. Because when you drive this on an isolation transformer, you actually need to have two fuses for safety reasons. And on the other side here, we've got the rectifier on this heatsink with the switching transistors here. We've got the switching transformer. And here we've got the diodes rectifier and some uh, filter cap filtering inductor. 
and some uh, smoothing capacitors here. And this looks like a, the large primary capacitor. And here's the output. Yes, here we've got some specification and uh, some fuse ratings. And over here we can see the power output. Output DC 24 volts, almost 20 amps, 19.5 amps. Output AC 1100 watts at these voltages here. And we can see here we can get some uh, more power if we have uh, 240 volts. This is actually a separate output, which is this cable here. And for output wires, we've got these uh, two thick wires here. And the two thinner ones. This looks like the 24 volt line and we got two thinner auxiliary wires. Yes, now it's time to chop this thing to bits. If we now remove the sensors from here, let's begin with this one. These are level indicators. This flash here shows that this part must be up. We will see soon why. Turn it down first, like this. I'm gonna take it out. Look at that. So now the flash is up. So when the water reaches here, this will float up like this. There's a magnet in here and a reed switch. And it will make contact. Yes, and here on the top here, you can see the input. When the water, water comes in, we've got a temperature sensor here as well. So now most of the screws are removed. Are very loose now. Let's remove these two things here. These are some kind of conductivity level sensors. Let's take it out. Yes, just two pins detecting the water level. That was a lot of work to get this part off. This pipe here. Yes, here we go. Here's the valve pack. Let's remove this tube here. There's a lot of water in it. This feels like a bad idea. Holy shit. Oh no, it's leaking a lot of water again. There was a lot of pressure in that one. It's water everywhere. Now it's leaking on the floor as well. Bloody hell. Right on, right on my expensive equipment. Are you kidding me? How much water is in there? Well, there we've got a minor accident. Some water on these two units and on my MOT. But it will dry up, so no big problem. Now we should be able to remove the pump from here. And everything is coming apart. Actually the pump is quite small but the motor is huge. Now it's pretty empty. Just this filter left. There's still a lot of water in that so I'm going to take this to the bathroom and empty it. Yes, now the whole unit is gone and it's just a bit, lots of pieces of it. So in the next part, I want to try to disassemble this uh, filter here. The reverse osmosis filter. And we will have a close up on the circuit boards and see how they work. And also we will see at these units here. What they are actually. 
Hope you find this video interesting. Thanks for watching.